Hi everyone, we are back again with a video on the IFRS and the topic that I shall be discussing today is the depreciation. My main objective is not to discuss about how depreciation is computed but rather to discuss about issues that arise with respect to the depreciation workings. So let's just start off. You have got in front of you the definition for depreciation. And if I could just go through the definition of depreciation, so you would realize this thing that depreciation is the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. Depreciation is the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. Now what exactly do you mean by systematic allocation? So you do know from your past experience that you can either depreciate an asset over a straight line. You can depreciate an asset over a, over, over a, using a reducing balance basis. You can depreciate an asset using the number of units method. So there could be multiple types of methods that you can use in order to depreciate the asset. Why would I use a straight line method? Why would I use reducing balance method? So that is just because if you think that an asset is going to give you equal benefits over its entire life, so you will depreciate it using a straight line. If you think that an asset would give initially high benefit and later on lower benefits, so you would be depreciating it using the reducing balance method. And if you believe that an asset has a life which is going to be equivalent to the production of a certain number of units, you will be depreciating the asset uh, using the number of units. So the first aspect of the depreciation is it's a systematic allocation. So systematic allocation means a straight line, reducing balance, number of units, sum of digits, x, y, z. There could be multiple types of methods that could be used. The second thing is depreciable amount. What exactly do you mean by depreciable amount? So when we talk about depreciable amount, the depreciable amount means the cost less residual value. The depreciable amount means cost less residual value. So depreciation is the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. So this is the third aspect of the depreciation definition which is it's a systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. Now the problem that arises is with respect to the life. Because a lot of students when they depreciate an asset, they get confused with respect to the economic life and with respect to the useful life of asset. So now let's just discuss that what is a useful life of the asset. So before I go ahead, I would let you know that in IA 16 property plan and equipment, there are two types of lives that are discussed. One of them is a useful life and the other one of them is an economic life. What is useful life? What is economic life? I am going to give you, I am going to guide you through an example. For the time being just try to understand that the maximum period over which an asset could give you benefit is called economic life. And what is useful life? Useful life is basically the desired period over which you expect to derive benefit from an asset that is going to be termed as a useful life. Take an example. The example is assume that you are a company and you provide company maintained car to your employees. And you do have an idea that if you are providing your employee a car, so that car is going to last for a 10 year period. That car is going to last for a 10 year period. And after 10 years that car is going to become useless. So the maximum period that that car can give you benefit is going to be considered as economic life of that asset. Now, but you do know that it is a company maintained car that you are giving to your employee. That means all the repair, maintenance, everything is going to belong to you as a company. So what you do know is that, that after a period of five years, generally speaking, the repair cost keeps on increasing and the residual value keeps on decreasing. So we are better off if we replace the car every five years. That is better rather than continuing the car for 10 years and continuously keep on paying more and more repair and maintenance expenditure. So although 
that car can run for 10 years, although that car can last for 10 years, but you don't want to use it for 10 years, you only want to use it for 5 years. So the useful life for you is going to be the 5 year, whereas the economic life is going to be the 10 year period. So how do we uh, depreciate the asset? We depreciate the asset over its useful life. We depreciate the asset over its useful life. So whenever you are going through the depreciation, this is an important thing that you need to understand that depreciation is the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. Now, let's move a bit forward. Once you start depreciating an asset, once you have established the depreciation, what is going to be the next? The next step is going to be, you have to recognize the depreciation expense in your financial statements. So assume that the asset had a cost of uh, let's say 100,000 and the expected residual value of that asset was 20,000 and you had a useful life of 5 years so you will have a depreciation of what 100,000 less 20,000 divided by 5 you will have a depreciation expense of 16,000 so what is going to happen is you will have depreciation expense of 16,000 per year now how do I recognize this depreciation expense? So when you go into IA 16 property plan and equipment, IA 16 tells you that the depreciation charge, the depreciation that you have established, what you could do is that one of the accounting treatment is you would recognize it as an expense in the PL. So what is that accounting treatment? That simply we say the PL is debited with the depreciation expense of 16,000 and the accumulated depreciation is credited with 16,000. But is there any other treatment for depreciation? Yes, there is one more treatment for depreciation. What is that? That is the depreciation is added to the cost of another asset. The depreciation is added to the cost of another asset. What do you mean by this? What do you mean by this? Okay, so for this you need to understand this thing that cost of an asset includes directly attributable cost. What do we mean by directly attributable cost? All those costs which are incurred in order to bring the asset into the condition and location as intended by management. As an example, I am going to give you, uh, uh, I mean I am going to consider a building. Assume that a building is being constructed. It is going to take approximately 10 years time to construct that building. The building is a multi-story building. And what you need to do is you need to input, you need to deploy a crane onto that building. Now, what is happening is you bought that crane for $100,000, assume that. You bought that crane for $100,000. And over the period of the entire life over which that building was being constructed, the crane was permanently deployed on that building. So what is going to happen if the crane was permanently deployed onto that building? So you would realize this thing that this crane is specifically used for the construction of the building. So now the depreciation of this crane will not be recognized as an expense in PL, but rather it would be recognized as part and parcel of the cost of that building. Why? Because that crane was specifically used for the construction of the building. So what, what accounting entry are we going to pass? We are going to pass this accounting entry that we are going to say the property plant equipment or the building is going to be debited by 16,000 and correspondingly accumulated depreciation is going to be credited by 16,000. So I basically sum up what I have discussed. I have discussed this concept that whenever you depreciate, whenever you depreciate an item, you depreciate it over its useful life. What is the difference between useful life and economic life? Useful life is the period over which you want to take benefit of the asset and the economic life is the maximum period over which the asset can provide benefit. The second thing is how would we treat the depreciation expense of an asset? So you've got two treatments. Either you would recognize it as an expense in the PL, or the second thing is you would treat it as part and parcel of the cost of another asset. If you treat it as part and parcel of the cost of another asset, that means you will be capitalizing it as a cost of another asset. So I hope 
that this clarifies how the depreciation is recognized and how it is being treated in how the depreciation charge is being treated in the financial statement. So thank you very much. Stay tuned for the future videos.